Hey guys, Harman, back for another review. So today we're going to take a look at the Injustice 2 Red Hood figure. Now this is made by a uh, company, which I'm not even sure if I could pronounce the name of this company. It's either Haya or Haya, I don't know. Uh, but let's just say Haya Toys is the one who made this. Uh, and this is more of like the like G.I. Joe or like 4 inch, 3 and 3 quarter to 4 inch scale. Uh, figure so it is pretty small um, but let's just take a look at the packaging here so you basically have a really cool image of the red hood uh, at the bottom left and you can see it says DC Injustice 2 red hood uh, then you have a couple like a warning got a little bit of the logos on there over to the side it just says DC Injustice 2 same thing on the other side and over to the back it just says DC Injustice 2 Red Hood, and then it gives you a little bit of a read-up of the company, you even get the phone numbers for the company, uh, who it's produced by, uh, and it says Exquisite Mini is a new standard setting series for 118 scale, featuring super articulation action figure under Haya Toys. So uh, that just confirms that it is that more 3 and 3 quarter or 4 inch scale. Uh, you got more warnings at the bottom, uh, and then it says ages 15 plus. Um, and then you have the DC Warner Brothers logos in there, and it just talks about Injustice 2. So, pretty cool looking figure. Um, I think if you're a big Red Hood collector, uh, you'll be pretty happy with this, because there really isn't much Red Hood figures out there. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this out of the package and get a closer look. Alright, so here he is outside of the box. Now you do get a couple little things here. Um, you do get a Daily Planet uh, backdrop, which is pretty cool. Uh, so you could use that for some photography, and I'll show you a little bit of that later. Um, and then it does come with a little stand, but before we get into all the accessories, let's just get a nice close-up of the head sculpt. Alright, so just getting a nice close-up of the head sculpt. Uh, you can see that they've done a really nice job with this. Um, you got that, like, scraped look to the helmet, so it's kind of like he's been, you know, knocked to the ground or uh, kicked in the head a couple times, so I do like that he has like that damage type look to him. Um, really nice uh, just design for the helmet overall. And if you look at the side of the helmet, you can see some nice silver details to the, uh, the helmet itself. It kind of looks like that's where it would open uh, for Jason to, you know, uh, take off the helmet, so pretty good details on that. And just, I like the overall look of this helmet. I just think it looks very classic and definitely what we're looking for in a Jason Todd figure. And the right side of his helmet still has those same details that kind of mimic the left side. Uh, so again, just really nice work there. And over to the back, again, you have those lines and a little bit of that scraping. Alright, and taking a look at the rest of the outfit here, um, definitely very reminiscent of New 52. He's got the high collar. Uh, there's like a little bit of a buckle around the collar. Uh, he's got that leather jacket like we've seen with him before. Um, you do have the armor plating on the chest and the ab area. That's something that's more, um, it is in New 52, but it's kind of like goes along with the Injustice 2 like armor um, idea that was a huge emphasis on you know Injustice 2, um, where you can upgrade the characters. But this is kind of like how he started, but again, you got those armor plates, which are really cool, uh, protect him against gunfire. Uh, you do have the little pads, which are actually a separate piece, so if you take the hands off, uh, you can actually slip those uh, elbow pads off, which is pretty cool. If you don't like them, you could ditch them, uh, but that does cover up the articulation. Uh, anyway, the hands look pretty good, um, and then down to the waist, you can see uh, the belt buckle looks pretty nice. He's got different holsters on the sides where you can see he would put his guns uh, in the game. Uh, he does actually use the guns in the game, but most of the time they are holstered. And just getting a better look at the side of Red Hood, uh, you can see those gauntlets on the wrist, they're kind of like that same armor. Uh, even the gloves have like those um, uh, knuckle guards, kind of looks like armor on the actual knuckles. And over to the back, you have those same great details, nice wrinkling through the jacket itself, uh, on the arms and on the back, just really nice, kind of gives it that uh, lifelike look to it. Um, again, you got that nice uh, belt work on here, the little holsters for uh, the guns, 
So really nice details all around uh, on the upper torso and waist of Red Hood. And finally down to the lower part of the figure, looking at the legs. Uh, again, those, those boots are definitely reminiscent of New 52 and even the animated movie uh, where you have the armored plates kind of on the shins and the lower parts of the boots, which is very cool. Um, and then over to the side of them, you can see there is a little knife holster, which is pretty cool. You got like a little boot knife. Um, and then you can just see a little uh, wrinkling and uh, just some like wraps around the legs. So pretty cool. Uh, but overall, great details on Red Hood. And he doesn't actually have to use the stand to stand uh, you know, on his own. He stands pretty good. Uh, and then you do get two uh, peg holes in the toes of the feet. And taking a look at the stand itself, it's very interesting. It's, it's kind of like, like a metallic purple. Um, and it's got all these really weird designs in it. And uh, I've played this game a lot. And I don't remember what this is from. It might be just like just a base from one of the um, one of the stages, I assume. Um, but I know that you can actually connect uh, this base to other figures. So if you plan on collecting this line and getting into it, it comes with these little like H-shaped pieces, and they basically hook onto here, and then you could connect this. Uh, to another base, which is pretty cool. So, like again, if you're if you're into this line and you really want to collect a bunch of them, um, this will interlock with the different bases. All right, so you do get some decent accessories with this figure, uh, but they are so so small. So uh, they are going to be very easy to lose. So if you got carpet, you may want to uh, get some kind of case to put these in. Um, so you do get. Uh, four different hands, so basically giving you two pairs. Um, you get the trigger fingers for the left hand and the right hand, and they're pretty much exactly the same. Uh, again, that same detail we saw, you know, the knuckles and everything, it's really nice paint work. Um, and then you also get a hand to hold the bomb, a hand to hold the knife, uh, and then there's the actual bomb. You can see it's very, very little. Um, my hand will just cover this up completely, but there is some detail on there. And then you also get the two guns, which look slightly different. Um, it's really just the paint, or maybe it's just the way the light's hitting it. But the paint apps are just a tiny bit different. Um, but the guns look pretty cool. Again, they are very, very little, so be careful with those. But I do like the paint detail on there. They're not just like black guns like you'd see with Marvel Legends. These are actually well painted. All right, and the last two accessories, which are so small, I had to tape them on here to just get a close look at them. Uh, you have the little grenade on the left, and then on the right you have his very small knife. And again, really good details. For as small as they are, I mean, they are incredibly small. Um, just the details are actually really good. The paint on uh, the knife, got the black with the silver on that edge. It looks really nice, gives it that sharp look. And then the grenades got some really nice detail. So overall, really good accessories for a figure this small. All right, so interchanging the hands is fairly easy. Um, if you have bigger hands or big fingers, it might be a little difficult, um, but it's it's fairly easy to get it off here. Uh, you just want to give it a nice pull, and then you just have that basic um, peg that we've seen with many figures before, just a round peg. Um, and then you just want to go ahead and pop the new hand in. So pretty easy. Now if you want to put the guns in, you may want to put the guns in first and then pop the hands on, uh, but either way, fairly easy uh, system. And once you get both of the trigger finger hands on there, uh, he could dual wield the guns pretty well. And the guns stay in, there's really no uh, loose joints or anything like that, so it works out really well. And here he is holding the bomb. Here he is holding the knife. Now, as I said earlier with the knife, you can actually holster it in the sheath on his uh, right shin, like that little shin guard. Um, the only problem is, at least with mine, is when I tried to sheath it, it got stuck for a second and just immediately I broke the handle. So these are really small. Um, you know, if you're if you're trying to sheath that knife, I don't know, you gotta be really, really careful because I, I barely touched it and the handle just broke. So 
If I take that out of the sheath, it's going to break. It's already broken, but there's no way that's coming out. So I'm just going to end up leaving that knife in there permanently, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, just be really careful. Now you can kind of holster the guns, but the pouches really aren't big enough and like doesn't allow enough thickness to really get down in there good. Uh, but you can kind of holster them. Now if I wanted to, I could probably stretch that enough to get it in there, but after breaking the knife, I'm not trying it. But if you want to, you can probably get those in better, but it'll probably end up stretching that plastic and maybe breaking it. So be really careful. Alright, so even though Red Hood is a very small figure, he actually packs a punch when it comes to articulation. Uh, and that's kind of like what this line is about. Super articulated, small figures. And I think they deliver pretty good uh, on this, so let's just go ahead and check it out. Um, so the head can move pretty good uh, left to right, um, a little bit down, and then up isn't too bad. So not too much up, but you'll be able to work it with the other articulation and get it a little bit better. Um, the arms can go all the way out, uh, all the way down, and then he could sh he could shoot pretty good up here, like you can put his arm up pretty high, so that's good. Um, you only have single hinged elbows, which is my biggest complaint, um, and they really don't turn that much, so as soon as you try to get it, it'll just pop off like that. And another thing I've kind of discovered is by trying to bend the elbows too far, they kind of loosen up a little bit. So um, this arm's pretty good, but this left arm, it's a little loose than I would want it. So it's kind of loosened up. I'm not real happy with that. Um, but you got really good articulation in the waist. You can do it all the way around like the exorcist. Um, there's really not much as far as uh, the abdomen here. like. He can, you can go left to right, and um, but that's about it. He can't really like crunch much, um, but he can go back and forward a little bit with the waist. So pretty good movement there. Um, and again, see if you try to bend it too far, you know, pop out of the joints. But you can bend the leg out decently far. You do have double hinge knee articulation which is great and of course it can swivel and then uh, at the boot you can see you can tilt the foot up and down and then as far as ankle pivot you do get it so and a decent range on that too so pretty happy with that um, so overall you know for the size pretty good articulation alright so on to the comparisons for the first comparison, here he is next to what, in my opinion, is the original Red Hood figure, at least from the animated movie and this type of design uh, perspective. Uh, this actually came with the Best Buy uh, Blu-ray, I believe, or DVD Collector's Edition. Uh, they actually gave you a little Red Hood animated figure, and he is really small. Uh, you can see even this uh, Haya Toys dwarfs that little figure. All right, and for the next comparison, uh, here's the Haya Toys next to the DC Collectibles Capula uh, New 52 series. Uh, now, this is actually customized by John Malamus, a.k.a. Jin Saltomi. Uh, he actually customized the head sculpt for me to make it look more like uh, the version that I like, which is like the Under the Red Hood. Um, and he also customized the arms, which were covered in these horrible blades. So... Um, but this is more 7 inch scale, so you can kind of see how much bigger it is than the Haya toys. And I love this design that Haya's went with, with Injustice 2. But yeah, he is really freaking small. And for the next comparison, here he is next to another custom, which is a bit of a hodgepodge of Mattel parts and some Marvel Legends, I believe. Uh, this was made by a guy that goes by Emerald Archer. You can find him on Figure Realm. Uh, I bought this years ago, and uh, I'm really happy with it. I still love this figure, but it fits in more with the 6-inch scale. So here he is next to a 6-inch uh, red hood, and again, you can still see that he is super, super tiny. 
But man, these look so close to each other. I mean, the way that Emerald Archer sculpted this thing, and you know, the way he did the parts, it's just so close. So I just really love this design, and I'm hoping that this new Mattel one coming out, which is one of their last hurrahs, uh, I'm really hoping this figure pays off, because I think this new Mattel one's going to be the real answer to uh, six inch scale Red Hood. And for the final Red Hood comparison, here he is next to the Arkham Knight Jason Todd Red Hood. Uh, and you can see he is also in that seven inch scale, so he's pretty big. And this is made by DC Collectibles. All right, and getting Red Hood back into some stuff that's in more scale with him, uh, here he is next to a Mattel Batman from the Dark Knight Rises, I believe. Um, and he scales almost perfect with him. He's a little too big, but I think I can make this work. And since he scales with that Batman, he can scale decently well with this tumbler, and he'll actually fit in there if you jam him in there, but he doesn't look too bad with that tumbler behind him. And for the final comparison, here he is next to some other figures that are in close scale to Red Hood. Uh, on the left you have the Jazzwares Mortal Kombat Classic Reptile. On um, the other side you have the Cobra Commander, which is the original mail-away Cobra Commander from G.I. Joe, uh, the vintage line. And then you have Jason from uh, the Mezco uh, Cinema of Fear line, which is one of their last figures. And I think this Jason actually works out uh, the best in terms of scale. Jason's usually a little bit bigger, so you have Jason versus Jason. So pretty cool if you want to put those guys in a shot fighting each other. Uh, if you remember, Jason was actually in a Mortal Kombat game. So uh, pretty cool. So he will fit into pretty much any three and three quarter to four inch line pretty well, but he might be a little tall for G.I. Joe's. And here he is with that Daily Planet uh, backdrop here. So if you want to use that, that looks pretty cool. And then you can kind of, you know, zoom him in, get a little bit clearer uh, photo of him, use with that. So pretty cool looking, um, you know, backdrop. All right, so that's my review of the Haya Toys DC Injustice 2 Red Hood figure. Uh, overall, I'm pretty satisfied with it. I'm pretty pissed off about the knife, man. That thing broke so easy. Um, as much as I hate those rubbery type of plastics, they probably should have used one for something so small. Um, it just broke immediately, so that's a bit of a bummer. Um, and then the joints, they're a little, man, as soon as you start really moving them, uh, you know, they tend to pop out sometimes, and then, especially if you just turn that too far, um, they do loosen up over time. So, there is there is some gripes with this one. And then the scale, I mean, it's so small, I don't have a lot in this scale, but I kind of knew that going in. Um, so yeah, I, I wish it was in 6 inch or 7 inch scale, but it is what it is. So overall, I think it's a really cool figure if you're a Red Hood fan, but I don't know if the average fan is going to buy it. Uh, however, I have seen that where I bought this from is sold out currently, so you might have a little bit of a time finding this one. Uh, but overall, if you're a fan, I would definitely pick it up. There isn't a lot of Red Hood figures, um, so you know, I think it's worth a pick up. Uh, so thanks for watching my review. Please subscribe, please leave a comment or question if you have one, uh, like the video, and until next time guys, see ya. <laughs>